Okay, so I can finally talk about Nano Banana. It's a model from Google that has been blowing up on the internet. I had early access and I'm going to say I had absolute blast with this model. Now, interestingly enough, this is a new Gemini 2.5 flash image. And it's not just a image generation model, but it can also generate text as well. So it can reason about images. And the great thing is that as a result, it gets next level character consistency that we haven't seen with a model in single shot. Also, you can do very precise edits to the image based on text prompts and the inst instruction following is great. But the best part is that the model is going to be available through the API. So you can build on top of this model. In this video, I'm going to show you how to access the model both on a web platform through an API. And then we're going to look at some example outputs. We're going to also look at some failure cases and how to mitigate those. So let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to show you a few examples, especially when this was available on LM Arena. And people have been having a lot of fun with it. Now, one thing which I want to point is this model's ability to not only create consistent characters, but also preserve scenes. So here is one example. This is the input image also pay close attention to the rest of the scene. You have a couple of windows, a lamp, a painting in the background, and the, this seems to be a plant of some sort. Now, all the changes that you see in the image are based on simple text prompts. The person uh, remains very consistent. You can do something like this with the existing image models, but in most of the cases you will need to train a LoRa on that specific individual. In this case, you just provide a text prompt, input image, and it's able to do everything. And throughout all of these four images that we have been looking at, the rest of the scene remains consistent. This is, I think, the most important part. The image generation models can add a lot of details that are missing in the original image or just hallucinate. This model does not. Okay, so let's look at a few other examples. You probably have seen this in other videos, so I'm really quickly going to go through those. What I want to show you are some practical applications and use cases for this model. So this is from D Studio Project. So here's the input image. The prompt is make them sitting on billiard board. If you look at this image versus this image, the characters are really consistent. Now here's the fun part. You can take this generated image, feed it back to the model along with a text prompt to generate another image. Again, if you look at this image and this image, you see very consistent characters. The rest of the scene is also very consistent. So there are three lights here, three lights here. Then I think there are a few signboards. You see the exact same signboards. Now there are, I think, some artifacts that are in there which can easily be fixed, but it's a very impressive model. Here's another image where you have three people, then the prompt is make them holding a cocktail glass, and then you put Iron Man in between those two girls, right? It does a really good job at this. Here's another example in which this is the base image. The prompt was make her drink the iced tea on the table. Now. I didn't actually remove the iced tea. It added another iced tea that she's holding, but the subsequent prompt was remove the iced tea from the table. And it seems like it does a very good job with that. Also, you will notice that throughout these images, you see this person in the background. There seems to be another shadow in the background, I would say, which is not present in the subsequent images, right? So you might see these small things here and there, but overall, does preserve the scene. Okay, so some more targeted edits. I'll show you a few examples later in the video. But one of the biggest use case of this is going to be in ad creation. So for example, if you look, here's a girl wearing a purse. The prompt is change the bag with the second image. This is the reference image that is provided and it replaces that image without any issues, right? Now you can use a very similar setup for virtual try-ons. I have tested it. It does a really good job at it. I might actually put something together and probably will release it. So you might be able to do a virtual try on with this model. 
Okay, not only that it can do these small edits, but it can also do both in painting and out painting. So for example, here is the original image of a person sitting on a bench and there seems to be a house at a distance. Now you can do out painting where you basically add more details to the image that were not present in the original image. Basically it's a zoom out shot. You see the person sitting on the bench and the house in the back and the overall composition of this image is exactly the same as the previous image. You can also close up on the face as well, right? So in painting, out painting, both is possible. Now in painting is going to be adding people to a scene or adding objects to a scene. You can also bring in multiple different objects and create compositions. So here's a quick example. You have four objects. The prompt is the man and the woman standing in front of the car with their pet dog. All of these prompts are going to be available with the original references and original posts if you're interested. And here's what it generated. So it put that car in the back. This person, the woman looks very consistent. Uh, facial features are exactly the same as the original image. The tie, even the shirt is the same. For this man, I think it has done some edits, so maybe it's not the same character. You probably are going to see some of those things, but you can easily swap this with that same image again if you want. Okay, so let me show you how exactly you can access the model. So this is going to be available in AI Studio, or at least that's where I have access to the model. And right now it's called Nano Banana. Probably the name is going to change. Now the output format is both images and text. So you can provide image as an input or text as an input and create both images and text as outputs from this model. Okay, so let me show you some examples of the type of stuff that you can do. I have uploaded this image. It's an AI generated image, but it's a very busy image. And I wanted to see if I can do very targeted edits to this image. So the first thing I wanted to do was to replace this sandwich with a burger. So all I did was I said, can you change the sandwich into a burger? And it's pretty smart. So it figured out where the sandwich is in the image and only touch that by replacing it with a burger and nothing else, right? So if you look at both of these images, the rest of the images remain pretty consistent without any changes whatsoever. And I guess like the only other change I can notice is this card where it's here, but if you add a burger on it, so probably that is hiding. But then you can continue editing your images. So what I did was in the same image without uploading the image, I just said, okay, can you replace the coffee cup with a Starbucks cup? Again, it's able to do that without any problems at all, right? So it has the ability to look at the images. It has image understanding. It can do special reasonings. And it only added that Starbucks cup along with the initial edit that we had. The next edit was just asking it to put a YouTube video on the laptop. Now it's pretty smart. So it put a cat video, which is really funny. This model can also do image restoration. So we're going to copy this very old damaged image. Let me just paste it here. And this will also show you hopefully the real time speed of image generation and editing. So what we're going to do is, can you restore this image and create a new image based on that. Okay, uh, and the text to speech system for dictation that I'm using is built in house. So I built that system for my own personal use. If you're interested, let me know. I'll share that with the community as well. Now, depending on how much load on this image is, it sometimes takes quite a while, but I think it did a pretty awesome job with it. Okay, so if you look at this is the original image. All right, so the nose part is definitely damaged here. And here is the restored image, which is pretty great. Let's see if it did anything with the fingers and hands. There seems to be some water damage here as well. Now, this is, I think, a more colorized image, but still the character consistency is pretty great. Just restore the image. Do not add colors to it. Let's see what it does with this. Now, in this case, probably it's going to be processing this image, 
But since it can do a multi-turn conversation, no, actually, okay, it actually did process that image rather than the original image. Still pretty impressive. Can you restore this image? Do not add colors to it, only fix all the damaged parts. Actually, let me try this. We're gonna take the same image and give it to GPT-4 image gen. Okay, so in this case, this is the original image and here is the fixed image really good i don't think it distorted anybody at all it is keeping the original image precisely how it looks like I, i'm gonna say i am pretty impressed with this model okay i'm going to just send the same image plus the same prompt that we used to a gpt4 image generation model now this is going to take quite a while so we'll have to come back to it and for the Gemini 2.5 flash image, it was able to do it just in a few seconds. Can you create a 3D interior design based on this image? Okay, so I provided this sketch of a house and I asked it, can you create a 3D interior design based on this image? Let's see what it's going to come up with. Oh man, <laughs> this is actually pretty impressive. Okay, yeah, like all the elements are there. Let me actually show you the original image. Okay, so there is may, like the main bedroom. This is supposed to be another bedroom. So there are three bedrooms, right? A living area. This is supposed to be kitchen. And here's what it did. So you have all these three bedrooms exactly the way they were. I think it flipped this one because the bed is on this side. So that's one change that it made. I think it did make some changes in terms of the placement of the beds, but overall, it's really impressive, actually. It's able to preserve everything that was in the original sketch. This is pretty neat. The GPT image generation or restoration process actually tried to apply a number of different filters to it. So it's going the traditional computer vision approach. It's using CV2. That's OpenCV. It generated this image along with this image, not what I was hoping for. Hands down, this new image generation model is really good at image restoration. Okay, but then there's one major issue with this model, and that is it tends to create images in square aspect ratio one by one. It's really hard to force it to create images in something like 16 by nine for some reason at least at the time of this testing. But there is a way around it. And let me show you how you can create images in the aspect ratio that you want. Create a landscape image of sunset from the mountains. Okay, so this is a very simple prompt. The original image generation probably needs a lot more detailed prompt to get something really cool out of it. But this should generate an image in landscape. But we're gonna see what is the output from the model. And lo and behold, it's actually more of a vertical image, not even a landscape. But the image output is pretty awesome. All right, so there is a person over here. There are a number of different mountains and we are looking at sunset, right? But let me try to ask it to replace this or regenerate this in 16 by night aspect ratio. Can you recreate the exact same image in 16 by nine aspect ratio? Okay. Transcription looks good. Let's send this in. And again, we get the image in very similar aspect ratio. So for some reason, it's not following the aspect ratio that you ask it to do. So someone recommended to use a, a mask of the aspect ratio that you want and then tell it to create an image into that mask. So here's a blank image and let's see if this is going to work. Create a landscape image of sunset from the mountains in this provided image. Let's send this in. Okay, so it did not work. <laughs> Interesting. It basically put that, I would say 1024 by 1024, that's the resolution it goes for within this landscape image. Add a sunset scene to this image. Okay, now I think we are making some progress so at this time, it is more of a landscape image, although it's not covering the whole thing, but still pretty good progress so far. Okay, I'll quickly show you the API. So let me quickly walk you through the Google Colab Notebook. 
you can use the same Gemini SDK for this model. You will need to provide the model name. In our case, it's going to be Nano Banana. If you provide a text prompt, the way you would use the native image generation for Gemini 2.5 Flash is very similar. It's going to create an image for you. You can provide image as an input along with the text prompt and it will do targeted edits in that image. So for example, in this next one, we put it in a dark alley and you can use the same SDK to actually use it as a chat model. So for example, initially we create a client, create an image. This is the image generated based on the text prompt. And then we do more subsequent changes to that image through the chat interface or chat client that we have created, right? So if you want to build on top of this SDK with Nano Banana, you will be able to do that. It's a pretty amazing model. So I would highly recommend when you get access, play with it. It's a lot of fun and it's extremely useful. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one. Bye for now.